Salutations and greetings. Salutations and greetings. Thank you for coming. Max here. And Max, how can I help you? <clears throat> Um, you know, the questions are usual. Um, we already are connected to Kuthumi, and I'm aware that Kuthumi is uh, is doing a lot here at the moment through through uh, his energy and through messages. So he's actively guiding the process here and organizing light workers here through his messages. Yeah, and guidance and um, and other ways, I assume. Yes. From 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 the other side, from the other side. So, the the main question is: Do I, I? I'm sure you do the same. Can you give any any details? Actually, he is more into the communication, and I am more into the helping, the physical help. Oh, uh -huh. into saving people from their. Uh, from disasters that they are not supposed to experience mm -hmm. um, with the help of their guardian angels, with the help of the energies of God, <clears throat> etc. But I am here moving things along more in the physical realm in some ways than in the spiritual realm. Uh -huh. So therefore, you some people will see me and not know me for who I am. I can exist in the human body for a short time at this mm -hmm. point and mm -hmm. guide people along, give them directions. Those people that uh, talk to someone <laughs> and then suddenly they're gone, that could be me. Yep. I... Uh... Okay, I, I, I hope I met you already in that yes, capacity. Yes, you did. Actually, you met me at a UFO place where you were t talking to people about UFOs. It was in the summer. You probably wouldn't remember me, though. I uh, the problem is I talk to you about UFOs all the time, and there were so many summers. Yes, I've been uh, there more than once. Did you matter. did you save me? Did you do any practical work with me? No, I gave you practical information for the moment. <clears throat> there was a time when you were were there, and you needed some practical information. And so I appeared for you to do that. What kind of information was that? Maybe that will give me a clue on the... On the About uh, your family. Ah. Okay, so we'll have to talk offline later because I... It's, it's, it's nice. Or just explain it to me later in my dream or in my meditation. That Whatever, nice. yes. It is all Thank right. You. It, you don't have to remember me to have the information. Sure. Um, so you dictated a lot of uh, letters to Helena and to the theosophists who followed her. Yes. Uh, are you continuing doing that? I didn't read them yet, so I, I, I still don't know your style I, and I don't I'm know the content. I'm still working in the earth plane a lot, yes. You will find that um, I helped Kutumi, I, I helped Yogananda, I helped Helena, I helped others do writing as well. Did you, did you help writing that uh, book about India? Yes, I did. Uh huh. And uh, Yogananda's book about the yes, uh, I did. yes autobiography of the yogi. Yes, of a yogi. Yep. Is I it your style? I recognize. Right. Yes. Is it your style that I recognized? Perhaps. <laughs> right. Yeah, I, I know very little about you, but one thing that. Uh, Blavatsky mentioned that um, there was no piety. You were especially eager to disperse um, uh, superstitions. Of course, yes. 
And um, the superstitions actually, it, it's hard, to, really hard to tell apart the superstition from, uh, from genuine spirituality. It is true. Some superstitions are part of spirituality, but you need to get back to the basics of spirituality. And some of these mystical thoughts are not so mystical. They are very practical, but they've made them into a mystical sort of understanding. But there are actually basic reasonings and thought processes from, from God and from the ancient world. And some people put them in these mystery, mysterious forms, and they do not necessarily belong there. The root of them is practical knowledge. Right, I understand, but look, what's happening? Just a second, there is some technical dis interruption, just a okay. <clears throat> so my point is that, um, yeah, there is something weird happening to my technology. Hold on a second. Okay, I think we are better now. There is something around you. There's an energy around you. Do you feel it? I feel allergies, so my whole perception is very distorted. Yes, there's very an energy around you that's doing some distortion. One moment, please. Let me help you with that. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Let me double check. I think we're good now. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> so, yeah, the, I mean, you were in that book of Blavatsky. You were um, um, fighting superstition or how do they say, criticizing superstition and actually, yeah, dispersing it. Yes. And here in, uh, in the Western world, uh, there is so much skepticism that it's other way around. It's all people uh, materialistic, so they exclude any possibility for any uh, anything non-materialistic. Yes, because they are because the money is the main thing in your culture. You right. must have it to survive. So everyone puts their interest in it because they, without interest in it, they will not survive. So they must put their uh, interest in it to some extent, otherwise they will not survive. Right, so I think that there is uh, some perfect, some optimal balance. And I think at this point we need more superstition. We need more uh, belief in supernatural, on average. I'm not sure that that will help much. Uh, I think what will help is the true understanding of spirituality and the true understanding of why it is important and effective. A, a superstition may lend uh, some interest to it, and make it more interesting for some, but the truth is the, that it, it is practical, and the truth is that it's necessary. And so they must understand at some point that even though the superstition is interesting and fascinating, that the basic truths are much more important. Right. <clears throat> you, I see that bringing some superstition or some uh, mystical thought process to um, the realm that you're in may help some people gain interest in spirituality. However, uh, beyond that, they must find the root of it if they are truly looking for the answers uh, if they are tr truly looking for truth in these different superstitions, they will find that there are greater truths at the base of it. And when they find that, they will be uh, enlightened and edified. Right. <clears throat> One of the things is, um, 
you know, that desire for purity, purity, yeah. Yes. Yeah, ma many of light workers are, <clears throat> and I, I think I, I'm doing that as well, but I'm not doing it as, as much, are trying to live so pure life that they uh, stay away from, from the humanity, basically. They disconnect. We, we disconnect from the politics, from the news, from the um, negativity altogether. So we are in some artificial uh, cloud which we create for ourselves. And you see what you think that you have done for yourself? Of course, in some ways. Yeah, I, I don't know the news for sure. I don't know what's happening around. Are you still successful in living a three-dimensional life? Um, or is it come to a point where this false life has uh, let you down? Uh, Are you still successful? Um, um, okay, I'm struggling for sure. So I'm not, there is no perception of success. No, I, there is a perception of crisis. Self, self that, is, that is your make-believe world crashing. You must yeah. get in touch with the real reality that is there not in a negative way, but in a way that is true and harmonious with their dimension. You see, there is many different ways to look at negativity and the solutions to life. And so therefore, if you put it in the right perspective and put shine the right light on it, it will bring you up and help you to succeed and have a thought of success, even though you may not be successful as successful at the moment, you will become successful because you're following the path in the right direction. You know, I, every moment I calibrate how, how much of, uh, of uh, how much I listen to Blavatsky, for example, and how much I actually pay attention to my uh, surroundings. And if my surroundings bring me down, I turn on Blavatsky and listen to her and, uh, and that lifts me up. So, That's so it's fine. a it's a balance which happens every every minute. I make these choices depending on how how do I feel. Like usually in the morning, I can take a lot of actual surrounding, but by the evening, I'm so drained that I'm plugging into the dream state and listen to books. I see. So you're looking for balance. Yeah, and also I. Uh, if I need the upliftment, I listen to uplifting books. And if I feel um, uh, strong enough, healthy enough, I listen to some uh, conspiracy books, which bring me down. But they allow me to see the underlying reality much better. Are you sure it's the real reality? Most conspiracies these days have some footage in truth but most of it is made up to lead you in a different direction. Well, that's a great question. I, I think both are true. I, it looks like there is a, both, both, both answers are true. One, one thing is that there is organized conspiracy and second that the conspiracy is very disorganized, but there is still a conspiracy. There is, and, but what it truly is, no one really knows. You have it you may be given an idea of what is perceived as the conspiracy, and there may be something very different happening. Just like what is happening in your White House situation. One thing is perceived and another thing is happening. So you cannot really know what is really going on. They say this one thing is happening, but actually something else <clears throat> may be coming out of it that is altogether different than what they perceived. Yeah, I, I, I mean, what happens now is uh, difficult to perceive, but I'm looking at the events of, uh, of the past where there is so much research done and so many details were investigated. So there is uh, more clarity on, the, on these events. Like I'm reading now uh, a biography of Kissinger. Yeah. 
And he is considered to be one of the main conspirators, but uh, I can also say that he was also lost and uh, made mistakes and was, was competing with, uh, with the other conspirators. So it wasn't uh, an agreement, it was disagreement between conspirators. Well, no one is perfect, and never the situation is actually uh, not... Each situation is imperfect in its own right. And each situation can become perfect, but you'd have to know a little bit about the future to make it perfect. So the thing is, when decisions are made, they change the future. <clears throat> and so that's where mistakes are made, where decisions lie. Um, your, look, your outlook, I understand that you're looking from a timeless perspective. And it's, it's, it's nice to know that it exists, but it's... I don't know how to use it here. I don't think it's very usable. Timeless it perspective. It's usable, but it, you have to understand how to use it. Right now, you, you have your own way of using uh, time, space, information. You have uh, brought yourself into a way of living, a way of understanding your time, space, and reality. So, therefore, it is not the same as what can be brought into a different understanding of how to use these realities. Now, po positivity is a major key to this, but it's very difficult for humans to stay in a positive realm because they cannot see the light at the end of the tunnel. Because why? They, you have to constantly be shifting and turning to keep your eye on the light, which is not always something that people are doing. They are they're trying to find the light sometimes. And sometimes they are just moving forward and they're not even caring where the light is. So, but in your case, I think you're trying to balance uh, your life without really looking at the light too much, but trying to move forward and balance your life so that it, be, it is as meaningful and as positive as possible, but yet you're not truly seeing which way the light is, where it is. Right, so your advice is to, to balance in which direction? Yes, in the light, in a more positive direction, and keep your eye on that positivity. Even though you may be down, keep your eye on it. Say, I was positive at this point. Let me see how I can bring that thought process back into the now. Because all time and space happens at once. And so if you're experiencing depression and you do not want to experience that, you must find a time where you were experiencing positivity and bring that into the now. Now. This is not how I usually talk. But with okay. you, I think you can understand it. But uh, <clears throat> say, you know, say now, I'm, I don't feel very well. I sort of feel uh, very sick. Not very sick. Very, it's not the right word. Um, unbalanced? Just, yeah, very unbalanced. That's a better word. Yeah, very unbalanced because of the allergy and the stress of the grant writing and... Uh, the worries about finances and stuff of that sort. Correct. So, so um, as soon as I get the a little bit of health, I do the work of writing and uh, and trying to fix the things. So fixing the mode, like panic fixing mode, and I clearly see the that um, you know this um, flight response, uh, fear, fear response versus. Um, mm, it's called uh, sympathetic, parasympathetic. Both of them are extremely high, uh, both trying to relax and trying to run at the same time. So that's my main trouble at the moment. And uh, how do you suggest I uh, fix it? I mean, I'm, I, can, oh, I have only two, two well, tools. I can either relax or work hard, and uh, both of them are sort of competing. Wor words are very powerful. And so you are not speaking these things out loud. But uh, whenever you come into these kinds of situations, say, I am succeeding, 
I will succeed. I am moving forward. I am heading toward the light. You must say these very positive things so that you move that direction immediately. So you come out of these, uh, I feel better, I am getting well, I will be well. You must, uh, words and thoughts that are negative bring you down. And if you start saying positive things, it is power. Believe it or not, when you put your belief system in the power of words, you can actually bring yourself up to a greater level. I experienced that. So that's part of my experience already happens many times. So thanks, yes. yes. That um, is one thing. The other thing is this. There are some parts of reality that are just difficult. There's no question. There's no way around it. You have to do it. It's work. But when you look at that, put a light on it. Put <laughs> it with a light. Not that it is so hard. You don't have to even see it as positive. Just see it with a light on it. <laughs> Put a light on it. And that is the symbol that this will become something more positive. You don't have to even feel positive. You don't have to recognize any positivity. The light itself on the project will, will, work, will work for you. I'm doing it habitually. That's you know, that's the way of working. I, I when I work, I do meditation and um, I habitually, habitually like connect to the light and bring it into the pro pro product. Very so good. my my main I think uh, main trouble is my belly. My belly in the morning is fine, but by the end of the day, it grows big and uh, painful. I, I, it looks like I just. So my my thinking is that. Um, uh, there is some uh, ancestral um, ancestral energy there. So some of my ancestors are panicking, and uh, and that's the way of they they treated themselves. So I think I'm picking it up from from my uh, either past lives or physical ancestors. All right, then let me come there for a moment. One moment. You are collecting the negativity for the day so that you can release it. All right. Stop Absolutely. Why the belly swells. Absolutely. You have collected all this negativity. In doing so, it causes the pain in the stomach. Now, of course. let's do this. Whenever, at the end of the day, you can release that. You can let that go. The belly will not hurt. It might stay swollen, but you must let that release. Let it go out through your fingertips to Mother Earth. Let it go out through your feet to Mother Earth. Let it go out through your consciousness to Mother Earth, because some of it is conscious thought that is stuck in the belly. Of course. And so you must learn how to let that go so that it can heal before you go to sleep. Uh, yeah, I, I go to the, at the end of the day, I go to the swimming pool and, and release it there. And there is certain... Very good. Uh, I'm glad you do release it. But there is a way not to have it build up. Right. Uh, and that is to... Uh, but you see you have the belief system and there is relatives around you and there is past life events happening through you all the time. And so therefore... They are the ones that are saying, oh, do this, make it this way, and do that way. Uh, you don't have to listen to them, but sometimes you do. So, but the thing is about this, you can actually know when there is negativity coming through, send a positivity to the stomach to neg negate that, to neutralize it. Neutralize mm -hmm. yourself with these more positive thoughts if you if you can do that you will not have as much pain or as much swelling 
Mm -hmm. There still will be some because you you there's some things that you just cannot control, but some things you will be able to, and it will help you to uh, bring that down, bring that into a a, an, a better perspective. I remember my stepfather was having the same problem. Um, yeah, his belly was big, and uh, he was also depressed. Yes. So I don't know. I, I think uh, if I drop the whole scheme, then I wouldn't be able to achieve what I want to, want to achieve. No, so right now, achieve, you must continue to move forward in your, right. in your in your work. You cannot just drop everything. That's right. not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that when there, you just take a few moments to uh, neutralize what's going into your stomach a few times a day. Just stop and neutralize the information that's in your stomach. Right. Yeah, I'm doing that. I'm doing that for sure. I'm All right, then doing a lot of self-healing during the day, for sure. Then um, um, you would be a lot more painful if you didn't do that. For sure, yeah. Like one of the uh, question is maybe I'm planning the things in the wrong way. Why am I so? Um, looking back, I did a lot of stressful things and um, a lot of projects, and very few of them actually bear fruit. So right. I, I remember, like when I was uh, like around 28 and 30, I put a lot of energy in my project, and it it ended up with nothing. It was many years, like six years of hard work ended up with nothing. Yes. I, le I learned some experience, but it was only experience. There was no practical outcome. I see. So I'm kind of spinning no, my wheels, spinning my wheels. And while I'm looking at other people and they, they don't spin wheels and they are much happier and healthier and even more enlightened than I am. Um, it is because you let the things around you there are some third dimensional things that are right around you. Your children, for one, that keep mm -hmm. you in a constant, um, uh, I'm not sure of the word, it's a, a constant agitation or, or a constant. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. And that is part of it right there. That is a very large part of it, is that your children are keeping you uh, continually feeling sort of negative or I, am i or am i doing it myself let me think um the thing is you feel responsible for them because right. you're a parent and you don't know what to do for them except for send them healing and positive energy but right. you cannot be fully responsible for them because they do have free will also and make their own decisions in some ways so mm -hmm. you must let some of that go. You are not 100% responsible for the way they are. They choose to behave the way they, they are because of outside influences as well. So you mm -hmm. cannot take 100% responsibility for that. So please take, let some of that go. I think that will help you a little bit. Okay. Because it's a I, believe, good point, yeah. I think that is a very big part of your of your trap for yourself. Right, right. And plus your wife, she is right. also uh, starting to have show signs of insecurity with uh, finances and other things. So and that bothers you as well. So the family unit is what is actually keeping you sort of in a negative uh, framework. Not that you must let the family go, but you must look at it in a different light. You must not feel 100% responsible for them, but yet you must uh, move forward so that you can be successful because with your success, it will improve their lives and will improve the way they will, you will be able to help improve them. Your success is something that must happen. Interesting. 
Do you see that? Uh, I see the, the the opportunity, of course. I see the opportunity and the service, the 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 usefulness of it. Yes. Yes, because you'll be able to deal with the money that takes one edge off and brings you into a, a, an ability to serve all three of them better. Mm. But I do think that these little <laughs> thought process that make it that make it sound more useful will be very helpful. Thank you. Uh, is anything else I'm missing in, uh, in, in, the, in the bigger picture? In the, in the grant writing? Or no, in the, in the bigger picture. Just that um, you are not really taking care of yourself in some ways. You do try to take care of yourself, but there are some thought processes that you let fall by the way that would help you, you that you need to really sit and think about. And that would be some parts of self-analysis because there is a, a couple things that I see in you that you are not really dealing with. Um, and if I was with you daily, I could lead you and direct you in that way, but uh, I don't have that time. But the thing is, the other thing is I see that there's some guilt and you, you need to get rid of it. Um, you are not, you do, you should not feel guilty about anything right now. You should ask God to help you to just forgive everybody, to bring you, bring you into a pure state so that you can move more positively. But you feel guilty about a few different things. And you need to, you know, get rid of that. Uh huh. Yeah, I'm doing it also, like all the time, but somehow it stays there. It's, yeah, uh, I, know. I release it, I, 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 I find I can, it. I can help you cleanse it out, but you bring it back. That's the problem. Yeah, it comes back for some reason. Um, I just, yesterday, I was listening to the history of Russia during my um, youth, the time of perestroika and and fall, uh, falling apart of Soviet Union. And that brought up a lot of memories which were down below and I didn't actually remember things. Yes. So, so this was a very interesting uh, shake up for myself. I, uh, I just relieved and I saw from the distance on the same events which I lived through. Yes, I and know. I, and apparently they formed me and uh, much of what I'm doing now is uh, driven by that experience. Of course it is. I think that you, some of your success is is uh, because of that, but also some of your negativity is definitely part of that. Yeah, like like the the, the critical time we were hungry, and that hunger stays with me all the time. Yes, I see that. It's a physical, but also it's a spiritual thought process. Oh, yes. one more thing, just with you, just, because I I think that I could help you a great deal. I I just um, there are so many people that need my help right at the moment. But you are a successful person. But I see that I just bringing these couple things up because I think they need to be resolved so that you could be happier. One of the thoughts. But it's uh -huh. time for me to go. All right. Uh, thank you very much for coming. You are welcome. Um, I don't know, how much are you involved in Hukola? Now and then. So I, I, I invite you to, um, to join uh, into the guidance of Hukola in a more... Um, well, thank in you. In a more systematic, I, a more involved yeah. fashion. Certain people within the Yukolo family that are very interesting to me, and I do uh, go to them. Others do not want my guidance. They don't know who I am, and so I, I let them alone. 
but there are some that are very interesting to me. All right. So, yeah, please take care right. of us. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, and uh, thank you very much for your coming, and thank you for your guidance, thank you for your help. I invite your presence in my life. Excellent, and I will be there. Thank you. Hello. Hey, Jim, welcome back. Yeah, thanks.